Hello and um, welcome to the channel. I'm on Manager today. I will review the 8th studio album by the Rolling Stones, Let It Bleed, or the 10th studio album in America. So do it what you will. I'm not sure what's going on there. I believe they, you know, they released they released more American albums than British, but they're from Britain. I'm I'm not even starting out, and the Stones already confused me. Fucking hell. But um, yeah. It's a studio, let, let's just say that it's a fucking studio album by the Stones. Uh, whatever, you know, number it is, who gives a shit. I requested the Palm Arts. He is, I think, a fan of the band. I'm not that used on the Stones, to be honest. I like them. I like some of their songs, but it's very few and far between. I definitely love some songs by them. Um, some songs on here I really love, so I'm going to talk about those. The genres are, according to Wikipedia, are hard rock, blues, and country blues. And I don't agree with hard rock. I don't think the Stones are really that hard hitting per se. Not for me at least. Blues, yes, I agree. Blues rock for sure. Although it just says blues, but it's blues rock. And country blues, well, you forgot, you know, remove hard and just have rock. Rock, blues, country blues. I agree with that. That is what this album should be, or what is, what it would be labeled, in my opinion. So there you go. Uh, shit, forgot to fucking start the timer, but it uh, does, doesn't matter. This album is ranked how high? Didn't even see, uh, read this. It's on the songs list of 500 greatest songs of all time. But is Let It Bleed on there? Of course it is. I mean, Rolling Stone. I mean, come on now. Of course it's on there. But the question is, how much? Or how high? So in 2003... No, no, it's about Guardian. Uh, in 2003, Rolling Stone ranked it the 32nd greatest album ever made. In, a, in their 500 greatest albums list. Personally, I don't agree with it, but you know, people like this album, people like the Stones, and I thought for a long time this was my long, uh, my favorite Stones album, but I'm not sure. I really don't care for the Stones to be honest. So um, if I didn't say it already, this request of a pawn art, who is I think a fan of the band. Yeah, I already said that. So there you go. Um, we had the first song, "Give Me Shelter," and this is easily my favorite song by them. Maybe Painted Black, but I would say that Gimme Shelter is easily the best song they ever made. Like people usually say, or I can't get no satisfaction in the best song, or Gimme Shelter. And I personally think Gimme Shelter is way fucking better. It has a way grittier, darker kind of Vietnam kind of tone, which I really love. Um, you know, I love that dark, haunting, ominous shit, so of course Gimme Shelter appeals to me. It has a very uh, catchy chorus, it has those really great female backing vocals. Mick Jagger just sings really powerful on this track. Uh, just a haunting kind of Vietnam fucked up kind of tone that the song has, it's just amazing. Um, this is everything I want out of the Stones. Th this sound from them, this dark gritty sound that they have here. This is everything I want out of a Stones tune, but you know. And they kind of blew their load on the first song. It's easily their best song, in my opinion. Brian Jones was still on this album. Uh, yeah, by the way, Brian Jones is my favorite Stones member. And I think after this, they really, you know, just became a boring band, in my opinion. Even more boring than here, because with Brian Jones, they also recorded Painted Black on, on the Aftermath album, which is also one of my favorite Stones songs. And this, I mean, this is easily the best song. Like, yeah, if someone would put this on, I would put it like right on the aux, would put it way fucking higher. Um, this is just a great song, man. I mean, it's a classic. I can't really, you know, say a lot about it because it's such like an overplayed, played to death kind of song. Although I don't really hear it a lot, but that's mainly because like the people around me are full of shit. So they don't, you know, they don't put on good music. So there you go. Then we have Love in Vain, and I have to say, this was a really disappointing song for me. 
Um, not per se least favorite of mine, but I do think that it is a bit cliche and cheesy and just kind of such a disappointing follow-up song after Gimme Shelter, but I mean every song that you follow this up with is going to be disappointing, so including this one. <coughs> and then we have Country Honk, which is easily my least favorite song on the album. I don't care about the song at all. Yeah, I just, um, just country honk, you know, it's three minutes long, it's really generic, it's, you know, the lyrics are very just, um, pretty blunt and just pretty, yeah, pretty meaningless to me, in my opinion, so that's kind of it, honestly, I don't really care for the song, it didn't really leave anything on me, so it didn't leave an impact on me, so I don't care for the song at all. Layered for Bland, the song was generic, so yeah, that's probably my least favorite song. Then we have Live With Me, which is a very eccentric, eccentric kind of uh, an energetic song by the band. Which I can appreciate, I do like that they kind of go this route, I would say. Definitely good. Uh, I wouldn't say great per se, but I do think that this is a very lively, pretty energetic song to listen to. Definitely more interesting than Love in Vain and Contron, which were just not interesting at all to me. So there you go. Now we have Midnight Ramp, or I'm, I'm skipping one song. Uh, then we have the title track, which is Let It Bleed. I don't think that the band does a lot of interesting things on there. Um, I do think that they are kind of interesting, you know, instrumentation wise. Production is kind of, you know, on the weak side, I would say, but they make up with that for instrument playing, for diversity. Uh, I think Mick Jagger sings uh, fine on this tune, so um, yeah, good close song to side one, which started out amazingly and ended on a pretty solid note, and everything in between is kind of take or leave it. Then we have side two, which is, um, or we have the, the first song, which is Midnight Rambler. Fuck no. The first song, which is Midnight Rambler, I do really like the song. Yeah, and I think that the instrumentation was even more interesting than on the title track. I do think that they really step it up here. And yeah, I just think that the band really just goes play, uh, places. You can almost say that, no, no, I wouldn't go that far, but you know, progressive rock. But you know, there are some intricate parts in the song, but I mean, it's the Stones. You're not going to get prog, so no, you know. So, you know, definitely a great song. Um, definitely one of my favorites because the, the production is pretty good. The instrumentation is very diverse and solid. So this is definitely my uh, favorite track. Mm, yeah, mm, well. Mm, yeah, I, I think it's my second favorite song on the album. You know, outside of Give Me Shelter, of course. That's, that's a fucking top tier stone tune right there. So. There you go, then we, then we have kind of a filler tune, which is You Got The Silver, which didn't really do a lot for me. Uh, the band is just dra bragging about, you know, I think their money's worth, their wealth, I think. You Got The Silver, are they talking about, oh, this woman is rich, so they're worthy to us or something. I'm not sure, you know, what they're getting at here. That's probably, you know, that's an, another ass pull with me, so I don't, I don't fucking know. So... Yeah, there you go. Um, I don't really care for this song, it's kind of filler. The lyrics are pretty generic and... Yeah, overall it just didn't really leave a lot, a lot of impact on me. You know, same thing with Country Honk. I, I wouldn't say it's the least favorite of mine. I think really the only my, the only least favorite song of this album is Country Honk. Country Honk or the only arguably bad song, so there you go. Then we have Monkey Man, which was definitely kind of a very just lively energetic track once again i don't think that this track possesses a lot of you know energy just lot, like i said just a lot of colors and shit you know just a lot of wild natured behavior by the band uh, yeah i do definitely think that this track has that and it definitely shows off it can get a little bit too much for me but i'm kind of in the middle with this track mainly because i do like that the stones kind of step it up uh, you know uh, than usual but at the same time that wild sound can get a little bit tiring on my ear so it's kind of in the middle for me i do still like it it's a good song so there you go and then we have you can't always get what you want which is the classic 
Stones tune, you know, outside of Gimme Shelter, of course. This was, this was the only song I knew outside of Gimme Shelter, so I've heard it here and there, and I definitely like it. I do like the piano on there, uh, who plays the piano. Brian Jones plays congas and auto harp. That's pretty interesting. Um, who plays the guitar or who plays the piano though? Like Mick and Keith, of course, they don't, so there you go. Who? Uh, Ian Stewart. Is that Rod Stewart? What the fuck? I was like, is the Oh, yeah, he died in 85. Rip. 47, damn. God bless his soul. Those piano keys are pretty good though, so really, God bless his soul. Um, yeah, this song is definitely good. I do think that, you know, the piano on here is pretty tasty, pretty t tastefully done, so there you go. I think that the title is pretty funny. They, they say it in a very appropriate way, you know, to, you know, uh, to flow with the song, I suppose. It's very nicely um, set in the course. In the in the building, of course, so I do definitely like that. Yeah, and I think overall this is a good closing song. It's pretty. It's really long. It's seven and a half minutes long. It might be the longest stone tune. I don't know. We have kind of a build up at the beginning, kind of like a, a female uh, singer that kind of does spoken word slash singing, and then later Mick Jagger comes in with its classic, you know, you can't always get what you want line, and then the band comes in and the instruments build up and they close out the album. Um, it's not exactly my, you know, it is a favorite of mine, but it's not my top favorite song because the song does go on like two minutes long towards the end. Like Give Me Shelter is really the only like perfect song because it's four and a half minutes long. It's, you know, it comes in with that fucking amazing guitar lick and, you know, it, it has a really strong message and it's catchy and it's memorable and it just goes out again on that note so it's really the it's really the only perfect stone tune in my opinion but you know i think that you can't is still really like near flawless it's definitely really nice to compose very nice keys so i do definitely like this song personally i like this album it's, it's kind of the same thing with actual main street i like the album i do like that this album is a bit more you know just a bit more well balanced i would say just you know a bit more easy to swallow and just a bit um you know it's just easier to listen to because it's just one like normal album you know stone's entire career right but but i mean just one regular album instead of like actual mainstream mainstream which which is like a double album so that was kind of too much for me i do think that this album you know it might be better i think i gave Excel Main Street like an 8.5 or an 8.6. Um, I'm not sure. I'm probably gonna give it a lower rating, maybe. I don't know. But I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna give give me give me shelter or give me shelter. Yeah, that's basically the song for me. That like that's that song I will listen to. Let it bleed gets a 8.4 for me. I, I like it. I do think it's a good album. It is one of my favorite Stones album, but you know me giving that rating and saying it's one of my favorites, it should indicate that I'm not a huge fan of the band. Still good rating, but you know this is seen as like one of the best albums ever. It's like you know ranked 30th, 30th best album ever. And I want to agree with that. I want to say it's one of the best, but that's mainly because I love Gimme Shelter so much. But once one song doesn't make an album, you know so. I have to be honest here, I do like this album. I almost really like it, but you know, there is some you know fluff in the middle which I don't really give a shit about. The the tail ends of the album is really great. Uh, some you know beginning stuff and near end songs are really great. But really in the middle, the, the fluff middle, I don't really don't care for so there you go. I do like Let It Bleed though and Midnight Midnight Rambler. Which are the centerpieces, so I do like those songs, but I started that, you know, with the tail ends. It, you know, it's kind of mixed for me, so 8.4, still a good rating, but I'm not a huge Stones guy, so that's kind of it, honestly. Thank you for watching this video, like and subscribe to the channel for videos like this one. Let me know what you think about the Stones and Let It Bleed. What do you think about this album? It came out in 1969. By the way, rest in peace to Brian Jones, my favorite Stones member. He passed away after this album, I believe, in 19, 
maybe in the same year, or maybe 1970, I believe 1969. So he died at the peak of music, 1969. So Brian Jones, you're one lucky son of a bitch. But I mean, music, you know, there's still some really great music out there. So, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a good and a bad thing. So there you go. You know, not, not, not that he's dead per se, but you know, that he doesn't have to listen to all that fucking garbage music, you know, all the top 40 crap. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going on like that. Or I am, you know, but I'm stopping here. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching all the things I just said. By the way, if you want to game with me, um, or wait, what? Oh, well, I have a friend going on Switch, but I can't remember this shit. But I do have a gamer tag as well. I got a PlayStation and I showed it off in like one of my videos. So there you go. Uh, if you want to add me there, my name is Neon Spirited. Um, I just made that name. I really love that name. So um, definitely check it out if you are on PlayStation. I think it works. I think it both works for PlayStation 3 and 4. So if you have that and you want to game with me or something, then uh, add me. My name is Neon Spirited. So there you go. Love that name. Um, if you want to know how I got that name or what it means, then just ask me. Pretty great product, so there you go. Um, yeah, there you go. That is the video. Probably no one gives a shit about that, but I love it, so there you go. Um, yeah, that was it. Uh, peace, and yeah. Why am I still going on? I don't know. Later on.